Okay, so I've reviewed a lot of Ho-Hem gimbals in the past. I've got plenty of their previous gimbal reviews listed down in the description. You can check out the full playlist. And I'm excited today to introduce you to their latest gimbal. It's the four-in-one, all-in-one solution for all your camera gimbal needs. It comes in at 285 pounds at the introductory launch retail price. This is the Ho-Hem iSteady MT2. Let's go ahead and start with the unboxing and cover all of the specs, the design, and showcase what it can do. Let's get into it. So you can see on the back of the box, this works with your DSLR, mirrorless cameras, digital compact cameras, your phones, and even action cameras like GoPros. Lots of things in the box. Let's go ahead and take it out. So everything comes in this very nice carry case and it's actually pretty compact. I can actually use this as kind of like a camera bag if I needed to as well. So let's start off with the top pocket. So we have the user manual. Then we actually have a lot of cables here to connect your cameras. Um, instead of taking them all out, I'll just show you the full list here. Lots of type C cables to connect to whichever camera you have. And if you want to check the compatibility list, hit the link in the description. You can see the full list of all the compatible cameras that will work with both the cables and also via Bluetooth control. So we have a phone mount, the tripod leg. This is your action camera mount. Then you have a quick release plate. And inside here, you can see the gimbal. Now you have an L mount plate for your DSLR mirrorless cameras. This would allow you to quickly switch between landscape mode and portrait mode. So you can connect it both from the bottom part of the leg and the main horizontal part of this mount. So this is the design. It's a very nice design and it's actually not that heavy to be honest. It's 653 grams. So it's very easy to carry in your hand, but when you do add your big camera on top, then just make sure that the entire payload, it would be able to be very easy to stabilize and actually shoot for longer periods of time. As with their previous gimbal, you can see this has a magnetic AI fill light, which will do gestures, and this can actually change to all the different colors on the RGB spectrum. You can actually pull this out and it becomes like an independent magnetic clip that you can just attach back there, like so, very quick and easy. You have yourself the multi-function control wheel. You have yourself the joystick, the shutter button, and the mode button. You've got a nice digital display there, which will show you what mode you're on. AB trajectory buttons as well, if you want to take some shots like that. Trigger button there at the back. You've got a lock switch. Then you have your USB-C charging port. This actually has up to 17 hours of battery life, depending on your usage, of course. And you can actually reverse charge your phone directly from the gimbal. So if you've got your phone connected to it, you can charge that up at the same time while you're filming and take the power from the gimbal as well. So that's quite a nice touch. You've got yourself a quarter 20 inch thread there if you want to mount some additional accessories to the side. And then you have your power button there. So lots of different options, but then you also have your switches and locks for all of the different axes. And you just need to spend some time making sure that everything is carefully stabilized. And then if you do go ahead and use your camera control cable, you will just connect it to that camera icon port there. And then you can also charge out via the USB-C port here to charge up your phone. So lots of different options to connect all different types of devices. Now, one thing I do want to mention about the mode as well. So you can use this mode, not just for the standard pan follow, follow locked and all of those kind of things. And in the interest of saving some time, I'm just gonna show you that here. So feel free to pause the video and see how to use the gimbal here. Now you can use the power button to turn it on and off by holding it down for three seconds, but you can press it twice when it is powered on to go into standby and just press it once to wake it up. These are all of the different things that you can do with the mode button. So single press, it will switch between all of those four different modes that I've mentioned, but you can also press it three times, five, seven, and even up to nine times to do all of these various different things. And that's actually quite useful as well. So make sure you keep this to hand in case you ever want to do any calibration, switch it to inception mode, for example. And then even if you wanted to pair or unpair the remote control. Now the shutter button as well, you can half press just to auto focus. So we'll be testing that out when I do set it up with my Sony a7C, which I think is going to be very useful just to make sure that you don't have to touch your camera at all when you do have it mounted to this gimbal. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead 
put on all the attachments and let's go ahead and set it up with my phone first and we'll dive in to showcase how it works with the Hoham Joy app. Okay, so now that I've set it up and everything is stabilized, I had to put on the L mount here and then I've got the phone mount connected directly into the L mount just at the end here and I've locked everything into place. To stabilize everything, you got these little orange switches on all the different axes all around. All you have to do is unlock them and then you can go ahead, make the adjustments on the different axes, make sure it's stable before you turn it on and make sure everything is unlocked from each of the different switches. Once you've done that, you can turn it on and I've connected it to the Hoham Joy app. Now I've shown you this app in one of my previous videos of the iSteady M6 and it's pretty much exactly the same as it was before. Just a quick run through, just so I don't spend too much time on this. You've got all of your options down the right hand side here. So you have moment as well to do all these cool effects. And I'll try and showcase some of these effects as well when I go into the video later on. You can take a photo, you can go into panorama and take like a 180 degrees panorama shot. You can go into time lapse, change your settings and get a very nice time lapse shot. And then finally you can do slow motion video. Okay, and on the left hand side, you can change your video resolution here. So I'll switch it over to 4K, 30 frames per second, but you can go up to 60. You can also do object tracking from here. So if you wanna maybe track someone maybe doing some sports or running or any other activity, even cars driving by, then you can do that from there. Then if you go into settings, you have your camera parameter settings here. You can see it's set to the back camera, but there's plenty of different options and I'll just quickly scroll through so you can see which ones they are. Then you also have your gimbal settings, which you can also change from here. So the AB motion duration, you can change it from one minute to an extended period of time, joystick settings, roll adjustments, collaboration, and factory reset from there. So very simple, quick and easy way to use the app and I can control everything from the gimbal itself. So right now you can see it says roll just there on the left. That's because the multi-function control wheel is set to roll. So if I twist that, it will roll on this axis here and make the adjustments. If I double tap, this will now change the focus. So I can change the focus of the video. So manual focus control is very useful. As you can see, the video is getting a little bit blurry. It's really cool just to create your manual cinematic shots using that. And when you double press, it will go back to roll as well. Now, if you hold down the control wheel, this is where the AI feel like will turn on. And you can see here, I've got it down all the way to 1%. It's currently on 6,000 Kelvins. Now, if I increase this, you'll see the percentage is going up on the brightness level. And although you might not be able to see it clearly on the video, but this is actually getting much brighter and this will start illuminating your subject in the low light conditions. Now, as you can see, this is currently set on the percentage brightness. Now, if you press it once, whilst it's in CCT mode, it goes down to the Kelvins and now when you rotate, this will go down to a very warm 2700 Kelvins and the max white bright is the 6500 Kelvin mark. Now, if you want to switch over to the RGB spectrum, all you have to do is press the control wheel three times. And now this will cycle through all of the different colors on the RGB. and you can find the one that suits your needs. And again, if you do press it once, it will go down to the brightness level, which you can then bring down like so. And if you press three times again, it will go back to CCT. Now that's really cool about the magnetic light. And of course with Hoham gimbals, one of the coolest things that they do is the AI gestures. So we'll try that out now. Okay, so as you can see, I have the fill light turned on and everything is going to now work with the gestures. You have a small little LED light, it's red when it's off and it goes green when gestures are being used. So let me go ahead and turn this around. So two main gestures, as always with their previous gimbals, you give the okay hand symbol to start the tracking and following. Very quick and easy. So now as I'm moving left and right, you can see the gimbal is very easily following me. The second gesture is just to hold up your palm to stop the tracking. So if I move this way, I can see the red light 
on the magnetic fill light and that stops tracking so if I move to the side you can see it's now not following me. Now that's very convenient like me if you do a lot of filming by yourself that is going to help a lot of just setting it up maybe on a tripod as well allowing it to follow you and I'll showcase in the back garden setting the actual gimbal itself on a tripod and making the AI gestures to follow me around outdoors that's going to be very convenient and I'll showcase that later in this video as well. Now one thing I haven't shown you just yet is how to switch it from landscape mode to portrait mode. Previously for smartphone only gimbals it was very quick and easy you can use controls on the actual gimbal itself to rotate it into portrait. This one's slightly different because it is an all-in-one gimbal which tailors for multiple different camera types and weights and sizes. You have to do a little bit something different. So you see this L mount this needs to be pulled out. You basically unlock it with the little switch here. And then this can easily slot out. Then the bottom part of this L plate, you push that back in, into kind of like a portrait view, and then you lock it back up. Of course, this will require you to re-stabilize it. So you change all the axes. And it shouldn't be too much of a work because it's actually very quick and easy to do that with each of these orange switches. And there you have it. I've made the necessary adjustments. It could take a little while just to get used to the right adjustments that you need to make for portrait mode. But overall, I think because it does tailor for a lot of different types of cameras and because of this L mount specifically, it is a little bit more tedious than the dedicated gimbals for smartphones because that's just a very quick and easy way to have something set in its motion. But nonetheless, if that's something that you would like to do is to switch often by landscape to portrait, then just bear that in mind that it would require some adjusting in between those switches. So now that everything is set up like this, uh, let's go ahead and set it up with my Sony a7C and uh, see how it handles something that's more heavier and see if it actually works very well. And then we'll go out and take some shots with it. Okay, so I've now mounted my Sony a7C onto the Arca Swiss L mount. You can see this one does have two screws underneath. If you grab like a small screwdriver, you can just tighten it and reposition it inside the Arca Swiss. And then I have the quick release mount directly placed inside the Arca Swiss mount. And that's actually very convenient. So this is working very well between switching between the different devices because you can keep the Arca Swiss essentially in the same position and then you're switching the mounts either from your camera or your phone. And then you simply slot this mount back in, make the necessary adjustments to balance the camera on the gimbal. And then the last step I will do with my Sony a7C is to connect the USB-C to USB-C cable, which is for my camera. So to the camera port there and to the USB-C port on my camera. There we go. Now I should be able to control everything from the gimbal. Let's go ahead and turn this on. There we go, it's working very well. There's no shakes, there's no calibration errors. In fact, I'll just move the cable down a little bit. There we go. Rotate into selfie mode. And now let's go ahead and see if it works by pressing the shutter button. And it's now started recording. So that cable connection I think is very quick and easy. It's so convenient. I don't need to worry about setting up a Bluetooth connection, but that does have the option if you do have a compatible camera. And now I'm ready to go ahead and do my filming exactly the same way I would do with setting up my phone. And weight wise, of course, you will have to get used to carrying a little bit of extra weight if you're not going to be using your phone and you're gonna be using your camera instead. But this is going to be so much more convenient for those filmmakers that want to get the best footage with the highest quality cameras and mounting that on a gimbal that's so quick and easy to use. And it just is packed with a lot of features to be honest. So now I can use my actual camera to do the AI tracking with the AI Vision Lite as well. And that light is independent, so you don't need to connect to the Hohem Joy app. You can just use it as a standalone, so that will work with any camera. 
then I can use the AB trajectory mode. And what I can do as an additional benefit by setting this up with my DSLR is that I can use the Hoham Joy app as a wireless remote control. So if I wanted to maybe use a joystick from a longer distance, I can now do that with the phone being the wireless remote control to connect my camera and the gimbal and do all of my nice cinematic shots using that. So plenty of awesome different ways to utilize the MT2 kit. So let's go ahead and head outdoors and take some sample shots, some footage using this camera and maybe try out the AI tracking with the vision light and see how that goes with this and see what you guys think. Okay, so now I'm outdoors and as you can see, I've mounted my camera and the gimbal on top of my tripod rather than its own tripod legs. A very convenient way to use the AI tracking to use gestures so that you can move around freely and be more flexible about it following you in person. So let's go ahead and test that out. I'll start off with the OK hand symbol and now it started to track me. So I'm going to move around. And this is actually 360 degree AI rotation. So I can go around the entire tripod and it will keep circling until I tell it to stop. Move a little bit faster. And look how well this works. This is great and I don't need to worry about getting any camera person to help me out with my filming. I can set it up on a tripod like this and everything would work absolutely great. And I can shoot at longer distances as well, not having to worry about making sure that it's actually following me no matter what things I'm showcasing in my video. Let's check out the speed a little bit. That was fast, it was fluid. And this is one thing I really like about the Hohem AI gimbals, just because of how well they work and how quickly they are to set up. So then when I'm ready, it's gone red. Now it stopped tracking me. Quick and easy to do that. If you also wanted to do some manual controls, you can actually use the Hohem Joy app and that will allow you to basically use the app to manually focus if you wanted to be that camera person to help other people in your shot you can move the gimbal around yourself with the joystick on the app directly okay so let's take a look at the app you can see joystick control now i can just use this to move the gimbal left and right so let's take a look And you'll notice from the options at the bottom, you can also change the mode from pan follow. You can also do object tracking. There's a shutter button there and you can change the settings as well. So lots of manual controls using the Hohem Joy app. Okay, so now let's go ahead and test out the stabilization. I'm putting my phone back onto the gimbal as you're seeing right now. And we're gonna take some shots and we're gonna try some of the moment shots as well from the Hohem Joy app. And let's see how smooth the footage comes out.
All right, guys, so that was the video. Hopefully you found that stabilized footage as good as I did. I've always been a fan of Hohem gimbals, and this is no exception. The MT2, it pretty much does it all. It tailors for my Sony a7C, for my iPhone 14 Pro Max. And if you have a whole bunch of cameras, it will tailor for pretty much exactly what you need it to do. So if you guys have any other questions, make sure to drop a comment down below. As always, make sure to like this video, to subscribe, and I will catch you guys at the next one. Take care.